Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. How are you all doing? Today is the last part of weather and climate and this is part 4. So without any further delay, let's begin with the video. So today we'll know about all the weather instruments. And first comes thermometer. The temperature of a place is measured with a thermometer. Thermometer are narrow glass tubes filled with mercury or alcohol. As these materials expand when heated and contract when cooled, they are used in thermometers to indicate fluctuations in temperature. So this is not the thermometer from which we check our fever, but it is the thermometer through which we can check the temperature. Right? Now, the 6 is maximum and minimum thermometer invented by Gem 6 in 1780 is a U-shaped thermometer that provides the maximum and minimum temperatures of the past 24 hours in one reading. Now we will know about thermographs. Some modern thermometers both measure and record temperature. They are called thermographs. Thermographs consists of a strip of metal attached by a lever of a pen. The metal strip is heat sensitive and bends when the temperature changes. This moves the lever which in turn moves the pen. The pen records the temperature on a rotating cylinder. Now let's know about hygrometer. The instrument used for measuring humidity is called hygrometer. Now there are some steps in which you can find out the humidity with the help of this instrument. First of all, a hygrometer consists of a wet and dry bulb thermometers. Now, the wet bulb thermometer is wrapped in a piece of cotton cloth or week that is dipped into a small cup of water. When the air is dry, water evaporates through the week. This cools the wet bulb thermometer and the mercury in it contracts, thus showing a low temperature reading. Now, the dry bulb thermometer is not affected and shows the correct temperature. The difference between the two readings indicate the humidity in the air. If there is no difference between the readings of the two thermometers, it means that the air is saturated and no evaporation that means no cooling is taking place. If there is a small difference, it means the humidity is high and very little evaporation is taking place. Now, if the difference is high, then just the opposite will happen. That means the humidity will get low and the evaporation will get in a rapid or a higher way. Now, let's know about rain gauge. All forms of precipitation, that means liquid precipitation and solid precipitation, both are measured using a rain gauge. Now, here are also some steps. First of all, the rain gauge consists of a jar with a wide mouth funnel placed over it. When it rains, the water falls through this funnel and collects in the jar. Second, the rain gauge comes with a specially marked measuring cylinder. Otherwise, we will not be able to know that how much water has been collected, right? Into which the rain water is poured every 24 hours. The markings on the cylinder indicate the amount of rain that has fallen. The rain gauge measures the depth of precipitation usually in millimeters per square. Now let's know about the third step. In cases of snowfall, the snow is melted very carefully and the liquid measured. One centimeter of snowfall is equivalent to one millimeter of rainfall. Now, the modern rain gauge is linked to a self-recording instrument called pluviograph. This instrument continuously records the amount and duration of precipitation. Now, as I explained in my earlier videos for barometer, I'll again explain it with the proper steps. First of all, barometers, what are the tasks? They have the task to record the atmospheric pressure. The 14th barometer offers accurate reading storage. However, it is not portable as it contains a large volume of mercury. Right? Instead, people these days, especially mountaineers and pilots, use the aneroid barometer. Now, 
or how it works. The aneroid barometer consists of a metal box from which most of the air has been pumped out. That means it creates a partial vacuum with like partially no air at all. The box is sealed with a corrugated lid. The lid bends slightly when the pressure changes. Movement of the lead either causes the pointer to move on a graduated clock based dial or it causes the number to change on a digital screen. Now, the last step that is, the aneroid barometer does not use fluids and can therefore be carried around with ease. There is no problem to carry it because it is quite much portable. Now, let's know about anemometer. The anemometer measures wind speed in kilometers per hour. It consists of four cups mounted on a vertical shaft as you can see in the image. The wind pushes the cup and sets the shaft turning. The number of times the cup turns within a set time period is used to calculate the average wind speed. The and moreover wind speed is measured in knots. Now, Let's know about a very common instrument. The wind vane or weather cock indicates the direction of the wind. It has four stationary arms that point to the four cardinal directions and rotating arrow head that points to the direction that the wind blows from. The wind vane and anemometer should be placed on top of a high building in order to get accurate readings. So, with your support, I have completed this topic as well. So keep supporting me and you can give me more topics on which I can make videos. Thank you for watching my videos. Happy studying.